Hey everyone, this is Spencer and I wanted to take just a few minutes to uh, show you how I'm going to do a value study. Uh, I've got, I do some private lessons and this is a photo that one of the students provided that they wanted to paint from. And I, but I, I like the dark shapes and the large shapes and that's really what the value study is all about. It brings out the, uh, you know, just the, the simplicity of the painting, like the dark areas of the sky. If you look over here, you can see in my photograph, let me slide this over just a little bit more. You can see that how dark the sky is against the clouds and then the building itself is even darker. So I just want to take a few minutes here, grab my, grab me a brush and um, a little blotter here to knock some of the water off. And I'm going to use three values, the white of the paper. And this is just a, a heavy grade sketchbook here white of the paper, um, the darker areas of the sky will be the middle value, and then the buildings themselves will be the darkest areas. So you'll see, you'll see how I do this. And I find this is just really, really uh, valuable and a big help. So let's go right, uh, right here. Just kind of quickly laying this in. Just a suggestion of it. And again, trying, trying to keep it one value um, at a time. So there's a, the roof line right there actually enters into the, the sky. Um, right about there. Leave that like so. And then what I like to do is uh, go over, even though this is going to be a darker value down here, uh, it's going to be covered over again. I like to go over it with this. Just kind of messed up right there, but that's okay. So whatever's going to get darker value is getting covered up right now as well. And let's see here. I'm just gonna knock this out real quick. Leave a little bit of shape here. Leave some of these light areas back here to pop out, even though there's no hard line there. I'll do that. We've got this wagon right here. It's kind of interesting. And then the last thing I want to do here for this, oop, shouldn't have done that. Last thing I want to do is hit this right here. Now this is this this more clouds up in the sky. Bring that down to, to help frame out the front of that building there, the front of the barn. Just kind of, if you're looking for contrast, make it pop. Leave a little halo around that maybe. And then just a suggestion of these clouds back here in the sky. Get this all blotted up to where I got too much water there. If this is watercolor paper, it would absorb, you know, it would it would work off. It would it would have more tooth, so it would pick up. But okay, so I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'll be back, and we'll put the second value set of values in. We are back, and uh, you can see I've got it all dried off. I got this water stain that's run down through here, but that's okay. This. This is more of a tool just to help me to understand what I'm going to be doing uh, before I get into the actual color painting. So uh, just looking for those big, big shapes, three of them, the light, the dark, uh, light, medium, medium and dark. Okay, there's a just a hint of a window here. And so we'll let that go. Just a, just leave a little suggestion of it in there. Not shooting for any perfection by any means. We've got a bush right here that's catching catching a little bit of light. The distant trees are pretty dark. So some kind of a suggestion to them, crowding it out around the bush. And I see there's a wagon right here. So I'm just gonna kind of get that shape in there. And this barn, I'm um, right now just picking out the easiest shapes, kind of feeling my way through it. 
some bushes right under there. All right, come here. There's subtle value differences in this, but don't don't get too hung up in that. You're, again, you're just looking for those big, the biggest shapes to tell the story. Window right there. Come alongside of the barn. There's some oddball junk and paraphernalia piled up right there. Under the eave. Lean to coming out. Then you have this up here. There's a get some more pigment here. It's getting a little bit light. Try again, trying to keep it three values, easy to. Not, not always easy to do, but you'll get the hang of it the more you do it. There's that kind of like a round barn quilt up there. Okay, it comes down. There's the where the lean-to attaches. And then there's a cast shadow off the barn right across there, so I'm going with that. Carry this on out. And then uh, get, get my shadows here. Again, just a, the essence of it, something quick. Leave a little edge there, maybe at the bottom of the barn there to help underscore what that is. A little light up there. Get me some more dark. And I'm just gonna run a little bead of dark along here and bring that down, feather that out. So we see the, the planes on that, that barn roof like so, put a little line right there, a little bit of a dark line right here. And there's not a lightning rod on there, but it'd be wholly appropriate to have that. There's one over here. And then we'll try dry brush and just a little, get a little texture on this. I don't know how well it'll dry brush because it's smooth paper, but I'm gonna break that up. And then now here's where I bend the rules a little bit, just to get a little little texture in these clouds. I'm going with really a, a mid fourth value in here, so not a not a big deal, but just a little something to give it a little more shape and definition. Always amazed at how dark that area is right up here. This this portion of the blue sky. Okay, so we are there, I think. I do a little, little more brush work up here just to suggest the edge of the clouds, but I don't need to get too carried away with that. Okay, so we, we see here, and if that's glaring off there, let me lift that up just a little bit. Okay, so you see right there the, uh, what we're going for here. Um, as I look at it through there, this, this shape here needs to just tie right straight across there. So again, it's all about the, the big shapes. All right, let's see here if I have, and there is the color version of what we're gonna be painting. So you can see how that, that uh, uh, modifies and, and changes things by going from the black and white. You could do this and it's, I mean, if I was doing plein air, I would be doing it from the color version, obviously. But uh, if you're trying to understand, you know, how this process works, well, you use converting it over in your software from a black and white to black and white from color photo is a, is a quick and easy way to do that. Remember, it's all about helping you to become a better painter, not about following a bunch of set hard and fast rules. So anyway, there's a little quick value study there and uh, hope that helped you out a little bit. If you got any questions, let me know. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.